So today I want to briefly talk about validity in studies that use secondary data. Uh, one of you asked me this question during our Zoom session recently. I offer Zoom sessions, check them out. And I think it's a brilliant question. I didn't know the answer straight away. So as I started to think about the answer, as I started to research and try to find answers, I realized uh, how under-researched uh, this uh, topic is. So there is literally uh, nothing to be found. If you find anything on this particular topic, feel free to comment and let me know because I'm generally interested in uh, what others have to say on this topic. But for now, it's definitely an interesting topic, a big gap in knowledge, so maybe even something for you to consider in terms of your future considerations and uh, theoretical papers, perhaps. So first, let's define secondary data. So validity in research that uses secondary data. Uh, secondary data is generally data that somebody else collected, uh, so the data that's not collected by you, and also importantly, uh, with a different purpose from the purpose of your current study. So it's not just uh, that you, you're doing a study and you ask somebody to collect your interviews. This is not secondary data. Secondary data is that somebody collected this data for different purposes. It could be for different research. It could be an institution that's collecting, gathering some kind of demographic information. So any other purpose from the purpose of your current study. So now what about validity? Validity is a very confusing term. I've said it so many times. I have a separate video about validity in qualitative research, but I, uh, in that video, I talk about validity in a, let's say standard or traditional research where you have your primary data. You collected your data, for example, from interviewing people or doing focus groups or any other uh, kind of activity but this is not necessarily what applies to secondary data research. So let's say you're doing a systematic literature review and you're, so your research is based on analyzing previous findings from previous studies. How do you, how do you go about thinking about validity? As I said, there is nothing in the literature. I have uh, really tried hard to find something in the literature. There is literature about assessing validity of secondary data, but it's a different topic. So what they focus on, what they seem to be exclusively focused on is trying to assess validity of the original studies. So if you are if you have 10 uh, previously published studies that you're using for your literature review, you're trying to, to reanalyze that data and come up with some conclusions, what, what the available literature focuses on is trying to establish validity or even reliability of these original articles, of these original findings. So there are, there are many ways to assess that and try to establish whether each separate uh, article or each separate uh, data set or set of conclusions was indeed uh, valid. But this is not what we are asking about. This is not what we are interested in. What we are interested in is assessing validity of our study. So assessing validity, instead of assessing validity of studies which, uh, which had their primary data, separate studies that had this primary data, we want to assess validity of the study that uses these uh, data sets as secondary data, namely our study. And it's a completely different situation. So the first thing I think we need to do is to assume that each of these studies, each of these data sets is valid. So the findings or the claims made in these papers are already valid. Now, of course, assumptions can be a dangerous thing, but you don't want to, uh, to spend time or to waste time trying to work out each individual study, work out whether it was valid, whether it was reliable. I just don't think it's our responsibility to do that because assuming that these studies are published studies, assuming that they went through a rigorous uh, set of procedures and, and uh, peer review uh, process, I think it is safe or I think we do want to assume that they are valid. So these separate studies are valid. So this is not our concern. This is not what I want to focus on. So this leaves us with uh, the question of validity of our study. Now, if we think about validity and qualitative research, and I do have, again, as I said, uh, this separate video in which I, I talk about this in detail, uh, validity is essentially about trying to reduce or control and reduce, minimize uh, different types of bias, including a respondent bias, which is bias that has to do with our participants, such as, you know, them not telling us the truth, uh, the truth or not remembering something, and researcher bias, which is all, uh, includes all kinds of bias that relate to us, our knowledge, our assumptions, whether we did things correctly, whether our interpretations were in fact 
uh, what our participants meant so this kind of bias so respondent and researcher bias now if we're using secondary data if we assume as i suggested that we should uh, that this secondary data in itself each study is valid this means that this leaves us only with uh, with the task of ensuring uh, of minimizing researcher bias bias that has to do with ourselves rather than our participants or in our case uh, the literature that we are analyzing or the documents we're analyzing and here i think that actually lots of principles normally applied or lots of techniques and procedures applied to primary data in order to reduce uh, researcher bias will still be applicable in our case. In my opinion, in our current situation, our main concern, our main task is to demonstrate that we did a good job at selecting relevant data, relevant articles. So that's the number one concern. We have to show that we have selected the right articles. The, right, uh, the articles themselves, like I said, they, they can be valid, they can be reliable, or the studies discussed in these articles. However, what may uh, pose uh, a threat to validity of our study is if we don't select relevant articles. And then the second uh, task, let's say, is again to demonstrate that the way we analyze this data, again, is valid. So just like in studies using uh, primary data, uh, as their main data, we have to demonstrate that when we analyze data, we're really finding things that we think we're finding rather than, for example, jumping into conclusions based on our expectations and assumptions. So both of these things, uh, namely showing that we picked the right literature and then uh, demonstrating that we did a proper, so to speak, data analysis will be about transparency. We want to be as transparent as possible so the readers will uh, be able to decide and make that judgment uh, whether these steps were were conducted were were done co correctly and transparency is about is part of audit trail one of the techniques that i discuss in in my other video audit trail so basically keep detailed documentation being transparent as well and show the reader show the reader of our work everything that we did all the steps that we did uh, give them access to everything show them how we selected the literature in our in our case be very clear and very strict and rigorous at the same time about our selection criteria explain what we did to select these articles why and how they are relevant to our study and same will of course apply to all analytic procedures another thing is again this has to do with analysis Rigor rigorous approach to data analysis always helps so any kind of study any kind of data that you're using if you have a detailed and rigorous approach, you're, you have a detailed, for example, appro approach to coding. I said that several times in several videos that being detailed in your coding in many ways increases validity of your study because again, it reduces the risk of, for example, jumping into conclusions, finding things that you want to find in your data rather than finding uh, what the data is actually telling us. Then some other techniques such as peer debriefing where you are using your, your peer uh, input and feedback, you're sharing your findings or your procedures, you're, uh, you're taking some feedback on board. So, so all kinds of interactions with knowledgeable or expert peers, again, just like in any other kinds of research, again will help you in your study if you are using secondary data and uh, arguably you can even do something that, rem uh, that resembles member check-in so member check-in is about uh, confirming with your participants whether the meaning that you found for example is in fact their intended meaning whether it's the same sometimes it involves sending them transcripts but this is not what we're interested in here but but generally any kind of uh, double checking and clarifying with your participants it can be an email sent or a message sent to ask whether what i think uh, he or she meant is indeed the intended meaning so here if you think about it you can you can also apply a form of member checking you can of course and i've done that before you can contact uh, the author of that article for example if you're not clear about something and ask about their intended meaning about their conclusion or their finding so so member checking can also be uh, applied here so as you see to summarize uh, when we collect secondary data we shouldn't be too worried about validity of each individual study but rather about validity of our study validity of our choices whether our choices were in, in fact valid and objective and, and relevant when it comes to choosing that secondary data that's probably number one thing because if you choose the wrong data your study is never going to produce uh, good results and the second part i would say is uh, an easier the, the easier part in a way 
is about validity of uh, the subsequent steps so validity of your analysis essentially and this part is really similar to what you would normally do with other types of, uh, of data with primary data. Now, like I said, I mentioned a couple of times throughout this video, I mentioned my other video. So I'd like to, I'd like you to watch this video because in this video, I talk about validity and I describe uh, several techniques for increasing validity of your study, which will be, lots of them will still be applicable to secondary research, uh, secondary data research.